Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is good to be here on the traditional territory of the Lekongan speaking people, the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nation. I'm joined today by Minister of Health Adrian Dix and Public Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry to talk about more details around the announcement we made two weeks ago about the implementation of a BC vaccine card. At the outset, I want to say that people have been responding to that announcement by rolling up their sleeves, and we've had a 200% increase in the number of people registered for vaccines. Minister Dix will have the, the decimal point, but as of today, 85% of British Columbians over the age of 12 have received a first dose, and 78% have received two doses. This is very good news, an extraordinary effort by all British Columbians. I want to commend uh, the public health team for putting in place a vaccination program that was safe, effective, and seamless for the vast majority of British Columbians. Vaccines are a vital tool in our toolkit to put COVID-19 behind us. Over the past uh, six, 19 months, we've been taking extraordinary steps to keep people safe, to reduce the impact on our healthcare system, and keep our businesses open to the greatest extent possible. The implementation of a BC vaccine card will allow us to ensure that those non-essential businesses that have been adversely affected by lockdowns and shutdowns and public health orders can now confidently say to their patrons who have been double vaccinated that they are operating a business that is safe for them to enter and enjoy a meal, enjoy the theater, go to a sporting event. These initiatives are critically important to our success going forward, and I'm very excited about the prospects of over the next number of months. These measures that we're putting in place will be mirrored in other jurisdictions across Canada. Already, Quebec, Ontario, and Manitoba are underway, and I'm absolutely confident that other provinces will join in, and the federal government, following uh, the outcome of uh, the September 20th election, will also be taking steps to finalize the initiatives that they've already undertaken at the administrative level to make sure that those who are traveling outside of Canada can do so confidently with uh, immunization uh, data available to other countries. And those who are coming into Canada will also be able to prove that they have taken steps to protect themselves and their loved ones by getting two vaccines. But we have seen an unacceptable surge in COVID cases, largely among those who've not yet had the opportunity to be vaccinated. And I encourage all British Columbians to weigh against their particular point of view today, the positive benefits of following so many other British Columbians, getting vaccinated to protect yourself, to protect your families, and allowing us all to move forward, keeping our economy going, making sure that jobs are still there for people as we go forward into what will be, I'm hopeful, uh, an absolutely terrific 2022 and beyond. But in order for that to happen, we all have to unite once again with a common purpose to see the BC vaccine card as a way to get to those places where we want to be at a sporting event, at the theater, going out to a movie, having dinner with some friends. Large gatherings can take place with double vaccinations. And I want to tell British Columbians that there are many things that the vaccine card is but there are many things that they are certainly not. And one of them is, is not to impede services, basic services from government. You do not have to be concerned about not being able to access provincial services, municipal services, because you've only had one vaccine or you had no vaccines at all. So this is not taking away something, it's adding to what you're able to do. And those are the things that most of us enjoy so much. So let's focus on that. Let's focus on making sure we get those numbers up from 85% to 90% and beyond. And we do that by focusing on all of the benefits that the BC vaccine card can bring to British Columbia. And with that, I'll ask Dr. Henry to go into some of the more intimate details about how this is going to operate over the next number of weeks. Thank you very much, Premier, and good afternoon. As people here know, the responsibility and focus of our teams in public health across the province have been to monitor, reduce risks, take steps to protect the health of everybody here in British Columbia. 
when it comes to COVID-19, it's all about that balance. Our goals have always been to reduce sickness and death from the virus, to make sure our health care system is not overwhelmed so that people with COVID, but also people with every other health issue can get the care that they need. And, of course, to minimize the disruption of society because we know that has effects on our health, our mental health and our physical health. As we all know, it's not easy and we have tried to find that balance of making sure we have enough restrictions in place to, to stop and slow the transmission of the virus as well as allowing as much as possible to happen to keep society open and functioning. We want to reduce the risk for everybody and balance that with minimizing disruption. And this is the balance that we've worked hard to achieve and right now at this phase in the pandemic, we have another tool in our toolbox. We have vaccination. And vaccinations have been proving very, very successful in helping us stem the transmission and importantly, preventing people from having severe illness ending up in hospital and ICU. But we're not yet at a point where we can uh, let down our guard. And we have an additional effective tool that has changed the role. I think we need to recognize that nobody likes this virus, that we're not happy that we are here right now. But we also need to recognize that some have carried a much greater burden. Loved ones have been lost, businesses have been closed, and jobs have gone away. And healthcare workers, my colleagues across this province, have been put to the test. We know now that these vaccines are safe, they're effective, and they make a difference in stopping transmission, stopping people from getting sick and ill. And getting vaccinated and showing proof of the vaccination will help protect all of us. It protects those people who are not yet old enough to be immunized, our children, so that they can have a normal school year. It protects the people whose immune systems aren't functioning as well so that they can continue. Um, and it protects our elders and seniors. And we've seen that again in areas in the province where we've had pockets of people who are not yet vaccinated. It can still spread very rapidly and the risk of people who are not yet vaccinated is much, much higher as we've seen. It's uh, 12 times greater risk of infection, 34 times greater risk of ending up in hospital to the, uh, compared to the same person, uh, the same age person. So this vaccine card is, a, is another tool that we have that allows us to continue to do things safely in those businesses. And one of the ways that we can reduce our risk going into the fall season. Ultimately, the choice is yours about whether you choose to be vaccinated or not. But what we need to do is make sure that we can continue um, to uh, keep things open as much as possible. And that's what the BC vaccine card is all about. Without the card, optional, discretionary, social, recreational events and activities might have needed even more restrictions and measures than what we have in place today as we're moving into the fall. So this proof of vaccination will take effect on September 13th and between the 13th and the 24th of October, people who have at least one dose of vaccine will be able to access these, uh, these um, discretionary uh, social recreational events and activities and then after after October 24th it will be fully vaccinated people, people with two doses or uh, some people who may have received uh, the single dose J&J &J vaccine in the past. We have put the vaccine card in place as I said to keep businesses open, to keep people working and most importantly to keep people safe. If you've not yet been vaccinated that is your choice. But these essential activities and services will remain open for you, just as the case has been for the last 20 months. You will have alternatives to participate in the settings where proof of vaccination will be required. In order, to, however, to minimize disruption for as many people as possible and make these discretionary events and activities as safe as possible, these are where proof of vaccine will be required. So let me share the details. As of September 13th, I will have new public health orders in place requiring proof of at least one vaccine to access these businesses and events. I will say until September 27th, you can use our new BC vaccine card and I have more details about that. Or you can also show your vaccine record, the card or paper that you received when you were immunized. As of October 24th, 
you'll be required to present your BC vaccine card showing you're fully immunized to access this same list. So what we're talking about are indoor ticketed sporting events, so whether you want to see the Canucks or the Lions, indoor concerts, theatre, dance and symphony events, so that we can get back to those arts events that we are so missing and being able to do it in a way that we can reassure each other is safe. Uh, licensed restaurants, including indoor and patio dining and cafes, and restaurants that have uh, table service. So what is not here are fast food restaurants, cafeterias, food courts, um, where people grab and go or drive through. We know that those are uh, much different situations. People are there for a much shorter period of time and it's uh, not practical to require uh, somebody to try and check a vaccine card in those settings. We also are including nightclubs, casinos, um, and areas where people now will be able to be reassured that they can go to these places more safely. Uh, movie theatres as well. We're including some of these high-risk settings that have so impacted businesses including fitness centres, uh, businesses offering those indoor recreational classes, indoor um, uh, high intensity uh, classes like spin classes, this will be uh, that added layer of protection so that businesses don't have continuing clusters and outbreaks and aren't needed to be closed during this coming fall. As well, importantly, organized indoor events. So right now there's gathering limits that uh, starting at 50, so weddings, parties, conferences, meetings, workshops that are indoor events where people are gathering together uh, with the public. And discretionary organized indoor group recreational classes and activities. These are the activities um, like seniors uh, fitness classes, for example, where you, you uh, will now need to show proof of uh, vaccination to attend those safely. As you can see with all of these, we've learned other ways of participating. So if you choose not to be immunized, then there's ways that you can support your local restaurants by continuing to do takeout, by participating in outdoor exercise activities or um, online activities, as well as watching your favorite Canucks game on TV. So what, the vac what is the BC vaccine card? It is uh, a card that will allow people to conveniently and securely show their proof of vaccination using either a digital, which you can see here, or a paper version. It will show whether you are either fully vaccinated, partially vaccinated, or no record found. And it's very simple. I know many people tried today, as did I, uh, to enter in uh, some basic information and the card will come up. It will have a QR code which is scannable, so it's a scannable square shaped image like barcode technology that is readable by a device like a smartphone, but it also will be a paper copy that you can use and verify. And I'll show you a picture in a minute. There will be a transition period, as I mentioned, until September 27th for vaccinated people to obtain their BC vaccine card. During this time, your paper record that you got at your immunization clinic will still be able to be used. So here's how you do it. Starting today, and we started this morning with a soft launch, you take these steps. You can either go to uh, gov.bc.ca slash vaccine card and you enter your personal health number, the date of birth, your date of birth, and the date of one of your vaccine doses. So that's the way we verify that you are who you are. Then you get your BC vaccine card. You can save it to your mobile device. You can save it to your computer. You can print it. You can save it uh, by, as I learned this morning, pressing a screenshot and then uh, swiping so that it uh, uh, goes into your, your pictures on your, car, on your phone. And then you have your vaccine card ready to present when you go to one of these uh, events or businesses that requires it. For those who have already signed on to the Health Gateway, you can actually get it very easily through the Health Gateway as well. But you don't need to sign on to the Health Gateway to be able to get your card very simply by going to this website on your phone. So this is what it looks like. It'll come up on your phone that you've either received both doses of a two-dose vaccine series or one dose of the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine series, that you're partially vaccinated or that there's no record. 
So what you'll see is a very minimum information with a QR code and your name. And those are the important pieces of information that allows a business to verify uh, whether you've been vaccinated or not. It's important that the website can be used to print your, your BC vaccine card by following the same steps and then printing from a computer or a phone. And we know that many people um, aren't so tech savvy with the phone, so there are other ways you can do it. You can do it on a computer, you can ask a friend or family member, and we really encourage people to do that, to assist you to print your BC vaccine card. For those who don't have access to a computer or a smartphone, you can call our provincial vaccine line at 1-833-838-2323, and we will help walk you through it and, and send you a printed card in the mail. Or you can visit one of the 64 Service BC centres around British Columbia who can also print your card for you. I do want to say, though, we know there will be some people who have challenges with this, and to be patient in the first few days. This service will be available over the next number of weeks. We have a period of time where we're transitioning in, where you can still use your vaccine card uh, that you received when you received your, your immunization. Um, but there are many different ways that you can get this card. You do not have to download an app onto your phone to get your personal BC vaccine card. And then when you arrive at a business that requires proof of vaccination, you have either your digital or your paper copy ready and you'll be asked to display it and with a piece of valid government ID that just confirms that that's the same person, that you are the person for whom that vaccine information uh, applies to. We're not going to be requiring government information uh, ID for, for those 12 to 18. As we know, that can be a challenge for people to have that. So for young people 12 to 18, you'll just need to show your proof of vaccination. We know, uh, families and caregivers or friends, you can download, or grandparents, you can download uh, others' copies on your phone with you, uh, or you can have multiple paper copies um, on your mobile device or by paper. For a business perspective, for verifying uh, a BC vaccine card, you have two options. And these two options will be the same throughout uh, the process where we have this temporary measure in place. Option one is you can download an app that will allow you to scan the QR code. And really importantly, this, uh, this uh, BC verification app, and I'll talk a bit more about it, allows you to scan but doesn't collect in or store any information. Or you can continue to verify it visually um, by looking at what is um, on the paper copy. So the BC Vaccine Card Verifier app will be ready starting next week and it will be downloadable from Google or from the App Store. Um, and you will be able to verify vaccination status using this app and then look at the person's ID to make sure that they are the person um, whose card you've scanned. The app only reads the COVID-19 vaccination information. No additional health information is stored on the app or on a smartphone that somebody uses to scan. And it's available, as I mentioned, for, uh, for Apple or Android devices starting on September 13th. So this is kind of what it looks like. One, you download the app onto your phone and you allow access to the, the camera. Then you use that to either scan the paper copy or the phone copy that somebody has when they come into your, uh, your business, your restaurant, and it tells you uh, the, the step three there on the right. It, what it will come up with is a, a green sign that says vaccinated, a blue sign that says partially vaccinated, or no record found. So it's very simple, and then you can go on and scan the next one. So businesses, as I mentioned, can also visually verify either the digital paper or the or digital or paper copy of the BC vaccine card, like checking proof of uh, age for alcohol sales. You can look at it directly and confirm that it is the person. And for people, as I mentioned, age 19 and above, you'll have to have a government-issued ID to verify that you are the person associated with that QR code. As I mentioned, we, can transition, we will be transitioning over the period of the next two, uh, three weeks up until September 26. You can still use your paper record, 
but these paper records we know um, have more information uh, on them that's visible to people as well. Um, uh, it's, uh, the QR code is more secure because it's directly related to the information that's stored in our immunization registry. So starting September 27th, the, the BC vaccine card will be the only accepted form of proof. And businesses, however, will still have the option of uh, viewing or scanning the paper or digital BC vaccine card. I know that this is a challenge for all of us right now. Everything new means that there's new things we have to try out. We need to work out the kinks. We've been working with a number of business organizations in the past couple of weeks to put this in place to make it as simple as possible. We have information for businesses, including step-by-step -step instructions. That's found on the, the gov.bc.ca website at vaccine card uh, dash businesses. And we encourage businesses to reach out to their associations um, and to go online to, to get more information. As well, we'll be launching an information call line for businesses specifically starting next week where we'll be able to take information and share it on the website, um, the questions, the issues that are coming up, the best practices that people are using. So that is uh, part of our commitment to engage with businesses as we go through this in the next week and as we roll this out over the next few months. One of the things that we have been most concerned about as we were developing the concept around this is privacy and security. So the BC vaccine card is designed using the global smart health card framework, which is internationally recognized uh, criteria for ensuring privacy and security. It uses these QR codes to keep a copy of your record on hand and you have the option of sharing that information with people. We are requiring businesses to use the BC app, which has very limited information. So it only comes up with a, a report that tells you whether you're vaccinated or not, so the business knows. There's no downloading of information, and very importantly, there's no connection to other health information that you might have. These are the, this type of technology has been widely used for proof of COVID vaccinations, very similar to um, Quebec and other places are using as well. And it's a, a framework that other provinces and territories will be building on and that we're working with the federal government to make sure that this is the card that you will use eventually when the uh, federal inter, uh, app for international travel becomes more available. So it will be interoperable with that. We'll be able to uh, access your QR code with the needed information that you'll need to travel internationally once that is, um, once that's in place. So these standards, as I mentioned, store only the absolute minimum information and are not connected to any other health records. But you still need to keep them secure as you would a copy of your vaccine card that has your information on them. So don't post your own QR code on social media. If somebody does try to use it though, it does have your name on it. So again, that's why we need a verification with a, a form of identification. We know as well that our immunization registry, that we've delivered over seven and a half million doses of vaccine, that there are some people whose doses may not be uh, or entered correctly or they may be missing one of their doses. And uh, so if there is a problem with your immunization record as you're going to try and get your BC vaccine card, you can update it on the website as well, immunizationrecord.gov.bc.ca. This also uh, is for people who are uh, returning to BC, who are students, who have been vaccinated, people who have been vaccinated outside of BC. You can go to the, this and update and submit your immunization records and that will enable you to get your BC vaccine card. Submitting this information is very simple. It takes less than five minutes and we will be adding that into the immunization registry so that you can access your vaccine card as soon as possible. Realistically, if we get a large number of people who are doing this, it may take several days before that uh, can happen as much as four to seven days. And that's why one of the reasons we have a grace period over the next few months. As well, um, people who are out of province 
We, uh, we have ways to uh, ensure that we can accept their proof of vaccination, especially from other Canadian provinces and territories. You have to show your provincial or territorial officially recognized vaccine record, and we'll have copies of those available for businesses on the business website so they know what they're looking for, as well as corresponding government photo ID. And the same goes for uh, people in the Canadian Armed Forces who were immunized through their workplace. They can show their uh, military ID and their vaccine card. And for international visitors, that all of them have to have a proof of immunization on the Arrive Can app, and they can use that with their passport as a way of um, showing that they are also immunized. So we've tried to make this as simple and as practical as possible to make it as easy as possible for those of us who are immunized to obtain the record and for businesses to be able to efficiently scan them. As you know, Provincial health officer orders are still in place, and this, these will supplement what we need to do right now as we're moving forward with the BC vaccine card. That means masks will continue to be required in indoor public places for people 12 and up as they have been. That's that added layer of protection that we need right now with the transmission that we're seeing. As well, we still have capacity limits that are in place under the events and, or and gatherings order. And that means um, 50 people or 50% capacity, whichever is greater. But what we hope as we move through this next few months with the BC vaccine card is that once it is only immunized people who are at these discretionary events, these social events, these businesses, will be able to remove those capacity limits because we know that we've mitigated the risk so much of transmission because people are protected in those settings through immunization. I will say as well that all PHO orders are enforceable and that fines can be issued um, under the, the, the orders that we have in place now. And they can be issued by a number of different uh, officials, whether it's the community safety unit, our liquor and cannabis inspectors, environmental health officers, gaming investigators, conservation officers, and of course um, public safety officers or police officers. Obviously, the first um, thing that the first line of, of defense is not to call the police, and the police are there to support us to support businesses. Should somebody um, be uh, disturbing the peace, and and we have seen that in a few occasions, but we know that that is rare. And this really is about the ability for us to continue to come together and do these discretionary, important social events, arts events, sports events together in a way that keeps each other safe. So as I mentioned, these are time limited and the timing may change depending on how we progress. But we are hopeful that we'll be able to remove some of the restrictions and we'll take away that risk of having to, to shut down or close events or businesses like we had to do last year as transmission um, increased through the fall. So the BC vaccine card, as I said, is another layer of protection, but it's not the only layer. Masks continue to be required. And of course, it goes without saying that all of those important things that we do, staying away if we're not feeling well ourselves, getting tested, washing hands, all of the things that we've now learned as part of our day-to-day -day life getting through this pandemic are going to be continuing important. But the vaccine card gives us is an alternative to more restrictive measures in many events and businesses and social situations. It gives us that opportunity to do things in a way that is far closer to what existed before the COVID-19 pandemic. I understand that people are tired and frustrated with COVID-19 and that we are concerned about what lies ahead and what might happen next. Right now, we need to focus on getting through this next phase and let's get angry at this virus, not at each other. And let's continue to support each other, whether that's supporting your local arts organization, your sports club, your local restaurant, whether you're vaccinated, doing that in person, or continuing to support them by watching online, um, by doing takeout from your local restaurant. We will get through this. We will get through this. This is another tool that we have. 
we know that these vaccines are very effective and they're protecting people. They're protecting people from hospitalization and severe illness and it's protecting our health care system. And we know that these are the tools that will allow us to continue to come together and to have those interactions, to have those businesses, to have those events that we need in our lives. So I encourage everybody to download their vaccine card over the next few days um, and we will be supporting businesses and working with you as we go through this next few months to get this implemented. We will get through this and we'll do that together by doing what we have been doing all along here in BC. That's supporting each other and doing it with kindness and with compassion. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Horgan, Dr. Henry. Uh, uh, today, uh, in British Columbia, and it's a significant thing, 7,545,871 doses of COVID-19 vaccine have been administered all over our province. That 85.1% of people have received their first dose. That 77.6% of people have received their second dose. And indeed, in the period since we started, um, since we announced the BC vaccine card was coming, what we've seen is a significant increase in registrations. And I want to note who's been leading the way. Leading the way are those aged 18 to 24, 85.5% of whom have been vaccinated, their first dose immunization, and still this weekend again, leading in registrations, leading in new bookings, that number will go up. This level of confidence, that. 17, more than 17 out of every 20 people have been immunized is a reflection of the extraordinary work and the experience of immunization by our talented teams at clinics everywhere in BC, by healthcare workers, by doctors, by nurses, by pharmacists, by the entire healthcare team. The performance has been excellent. It's been done with generosity and safety and I hear every day from people who were in some cases worried about the experience, no one likes to get a shot in general, and who have found the experience to be immeasurably positive in their lives and the experience of going to an immunization clinic positive. And I want to encourage everybody today, everybody, to join all of those people, to join that 85.1% and get vaccinated against COVID-19. Dr. Henry stated the numbers pretty clearly. 12 times more likely to, uh, to test positive for COVID-19 if you're unvaccinated. 34 times more likely, 34 to go to hospital. And when you consider what it takes to go to hospital and the significance of that, both for our healthcare system, but for you as an individual, I think the case is so profoundly strong right now, if you haven't been vaccinated, to get vaccinated, to book, to register, to register your appointment to go get vaccinated or drop in at our many drop-in opportunities. This week, focusing on young people, 12 to 17, 18 to 30, we're going to continue in, in working with school districts and working with our post-secondary sector to see there are more and more opportunities, particularly for young people to get vaccinated in this time. But if you're one of the more than 140,000 people over 60 who have not yet been vaccinated, this is an important time as well because your level of risk should drive you to make that decision. The BC vaccine card builds on the confidence that this vaccination campaign has shown that confidence that says that in our pandemic, we are making the right choice by getting vaccinated, that we're making the best choices and that right now, especially with the surge in cases and in hospitalizations we've seen primarily in groups of unvaccinated people, we're doing exactly what's required to save lives and to save people's long-term health. I think it's important to recognize that uh, after all we've been through in the last many months, including launching the most remarkable and effective vaccination effort our province has ever seen, getting the BC vaccine card is straightforward. Dr. Henry took you through that just a few minutes ago. First, and this is the most important part, get vaccinated. Second, visit gov.bc.ca slash vaccine card and download or print a copy of our BC vaccine car and card and store it on our phone or print a paper copy. Now, for any reason, 
not able to access the online website to download or print a card, we can still get our BC vaccine card. We can call 1-833-838-2323 to get a copy of our card mailed to us. We can ask a family member or a trusted friend or support person to print our card for us. Or we can visit a Service BC Centre around BC to get one. And let's remember all of us to reach out and help those we know might need our help in getting their BC vaccine card. BC vac the BC's vaccine card is a critical new initiative at a key moment in our BC pandemic. And getting it is a step that we're all taking together. One that will see us continue to adapt to make sure that we're not just able to get the card, but the businesses can use it to its full potential to give us all additional confidence that when we're participating in events and activities, those around us are fully vaccinated as well. The pandemic has taken a heavy toll on all of us. Some, of course, more than others. The road back continues to be long and challenging. The BC vaccine card is a welcome milestone on the way, showing how far we've come and just how, as important that we are all coming back together. Remember, today, if you haven't been vaccinated, get vaccinated. Premier? Okay, we will now move into the question portion of the announcement. As a reminder to everybody on the phone line, please press star one to enter the queue. You're limited to one question and one follow-up only. First question today is from Binder Sajjan, CTV. Hi there, um, I'm just wondering, um, I know we heard there that this measure is being put in place partly to make sure that businesses can remain open. I know last time we saw um, closures or restrictions, there really weren't vaccines. Now we are seeing rising case numbers and hospitals are busier. So how likely uh, was it that we were heading for some type of restrictions? And how much of this is about um, just getting people who haven't had their vaccine, putting a little bit of pressure on them to get that vaccine? Well, there's a, a couple of things there. I'll take a, a, a stab at it, to, and then I'll ask Dr. Henry to fill in some of the, the detail. Uh, for me, for the government, uh, Minister Dix and I, and taking advice and counsel from public health, uh, Dr. Henry and her team uh, from experts across the province and across the country, it's abundantly clear that the COVID fourth wave is confined largely to those who have not been vaccinated. So are we anxious to get more people vaccinated? Absolutely. Our first order of business, and Dr. Henry has been saying this for 19 or 20 months, our first order of business is to keep people safe, to keep them well in the midst of a global pandemic. So uh, we're unapologetic about encouraging people to get vaccinated. Having said that, uh, we have been working with industry from day one. I would suggest, as, as Adrian has, unprecedented the uh, immunization program that was just put in place, uh, but also unprecedented has been the level of engagement between government, industry, labor, and civil society about how do we all get through this together. And we heard repeatedly from industry that a better course of action for them was to ensure that they were providing a safe env environment and atmosphere for their patrons, whether they be patrons of the arts, uh, sports fans, uh, those who are uh, anxious to get back into gymnasiums to keep themselves fit, those who want to engage in civil society. The best way forward was to ensure that those who had taken the steps to protect themselves, their loved ones, their community, were able to access these discretionary items uh, throughout the end of the pandemic. And that's why we're here today. Uh, what was the motivation? It has always been to keep British Columbians uh, safe. What are the positive outcomes? Uh, as I said, uh, a 200 percent increase when we announced we were going uh, to take the course that uh, others have, have charted here in Canada, Ontario, uh, just recently, Quebec initially and Manitoba, as well as a lot of work across uh, the country, uh, government to government, trying to find the best way to have continuity from coast to coast to coast to protect British Columbians. That's been the objective, and I'm confident that that will be the outcome as well. Bender, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yes, um, and uh, we were, today was supposed to be the earliest we were going to head into step four. Uh, just wondering, you know, um, like looking back, how, 
what you're thinking about that. How, are you disappointed or is this just something that we have to deal with in this pandemic? And when you talk about restrictions possibly easing inside venues where people are fully vaccinated, how soon could that happen? Yeah, I think that's sort of a, um, a segue for the last question, and and I absolutely agree with with Premier Horgan. Um, you know, we we are playing the hands that were dealt with here. So yes, when we started the restart, we looked at what was happening, um, how effective vaccines were, what was circulation, uh, what were the things that we needed to have in place, and some of the incentives we were using early on were things like uh, no longer needing to wear masks if you were double vaccinated in these indoor public. Spaces. But the reality is that uh, with this more transmissible variant, what we're seeing is vaccination at a higher level becomes more important. And we've seen this play out in places like uh, interior health, where we had a lot of unprotected contact with people, and there was enough people who had not yet been immunized that it spread really rapidly, and that meant that we put strain on hospitals. There were people who were becoming very sick. We had overflow into uh, long-term care homes in particular that led to, to more morbidity and mortality. So we did have to put restrictions in place there in restaurants and some of the uh, bars and nightclubs where there was a lot of transmission happening. And we found that once we raised the immunization levels in those settings, then they can start to operate safely again. So these are the things that we're learning here. We're learning about watching what's happening in the UK, in the US, and it really is in pockets where we have not enough people yet immunized that this virus can still take off like crazy. So yes, we, are, we still have restrictions in place that come with step three. We have the mask mandate now as cases started to increase as we're heading into the fall. So it really is looking at that balancing again of what are the things that will help us get through the fall with the minimum that we can do to disrupt all of those important things that we have in our lives, recognizing that we can mitigate this risk a lot by having people immunized. So it, it is an incentive for people to be immunized. It's really to, to that nudge for a lot of people that I know that are um, very busy with their lives, hadn't had the opportunity to get immunized. So it also goes hand in hand with us going out to uh, communities, to community centers, to fairs, to workplaces, providing vaccine to people where they are so that it is easy for them to get it no matter what. That you don't need to have ID, you don't need to have um, MSP, you don't need to have anything. You, are, uh, you have access to to a free vaccine where you are when you need it. So those are all parts that we needed to have in play as we moved into the fall. But really it was looking at what's happening, what could potentially happen um, if we did not uh, allow uh, for the mitigation effects of things like the vaccine card. And uh, yeah, I am hopeful that we'll transition over the next few months and by October 24th, um, if we get enough people to, to step up and get protected and to be able to participate in these events, that we'll be able to increase the numbers of people so that we will be somewhere near uh, what we had envisioned in stage uh, step four of the restart. But it's not going to be the same. And it's not going to be the same because we know more now and we've learned more and the virus has changed some more from where we were in uh, May and June when we looked at the data then. So it, it is trying to find, walk that fine line every day of uh, what are the things that we need to do to stop people from getting sick and to keep the health system going and to prevent as much as we can disruption in society. Next question is from Rob Shaw, Czech News. Oh, hi. Uh, Dr. Henry, could you just expand on that, that last kind of October 24th date again? When you talk about lifting restrictions, does that mean we could see a full Rogers Arena for a sports game or a concert or kind of max capacity, hundreds of people crammed in for a wedding type of thing? Or, or are you talking about just slowly increasing that 50% capacity to a 60 or 75% or something like that? Yeah, you know, obviously I would like the former. Um, as I see it, you know, we'll, we'll need to watch what's happening. Uh, as we go into the fall, we know that there's other respiratory viruses we're starting to see, mostly adenovirus, enterovirus, the things that cause common cold. We know that um, the last year that we saw in the fall, um, COVID also started to transmit more easily and to be more prevalent during the fall. 
and we want to pr protect those really important things. We know how critical it is for kids to be back in school and for universities to be back in uh, uh, in person teaching in, in those settings to make sure that workplaces continue to stay open. So all of those things we'll measure as we go through this next little while, but I actually do believe we'll be able to, I mean, I really look forward to seeing a full hockey game sometime in the fall or early next winter. Rob, do you have a follow-up? Uh, Premier, you know, the vaccine passports seem to have triggered something in some people out there. We're seeing rising kind of, you know, threats of violence, people throwing gravel at the prime minister, death threats against MLAs, the protests. Um, what do you say? What do you want to say to those people out there who view this vaccine passport as some incredible infringement on their, their life that they're willing to go out and harass healthcare workers for it? Uh, and what do you want to say to them? Well, it is, uh, Rob, you're, you're absolutely right. There is a, a sense in the broader community that we would prefer to have COVID behind us. We're tired, uh, we're exasperated, uh, we're frustrated. Uh, we can continue to discuss how we feel, but we also need to continue focusing on what do we do today to prepare for tomorrow. And that's why we brought forward the uh, immunization card, the vaccine card, so that we can continue to keep the economy going. We can continue to give hope to people that there is an end to this if they take appropriate steps to protect themselves and, and their families and their community. And for those who uh, see this as a, as a broader issue than that, I, I don't really have much to say, quite frankly. This is not about restricting people's rights. This is about giving more rights to those who've taken steps to protect themselves. There will be no services denied to any British Columbians as a result of the vaccine card. There will be no uh, inability for people to go grocery shopping, to go into retail establishments. Uh, Dr. Henry, Minister Dix and a team through uh, uh, jobs, innovation uh, and uh, economic recovery have been working with the tourism, arts and culture sector, uh, working with municipalities. We've been talking in an unprecedented way. And it's frustrating, I have to say, for those of us who are all working uh, to a common purpose that really does not have uh, an ideological foundation. Those who are seeing this as, I mean, there are, people are getting vaccinated, whether they're liberals, new Democrats, conservatives, greens, uh, uh, independence. People are getting vaccinated because it's the right thing to do to protect themselves and, and to move forward. And this has been the case for decades in British Columbia and in Canada. Vaccines are a credible and effective way to protect our, us from the diseases that, uh, that have been plaguing the earth for a long, long time. So those who want to make this more than what it is, I, I really don't have much to say to them other than if you have a grievance, you should take it uh, to elected representatives, not to our health care systems. Uh, I think I got out of my system my frustration for the events of last week. But I do understand that people are anxious, they're angry, and they're lashing out. Uh, I regret that. Uh, I would prefer that we follow uh, the advice that Dr. Henry's been giving us for some time and our parents gave us a long, long time ago. Be kind. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes before you cast judgment upon them. That's how I was raised. And I think the vast majority of British Columbians would like us all to just kind of get along as we make our way through this. We'll disagree on issues, obviously. That's what happens in public life. But we shouldn't disagree on the fundamental premise that we want to keep our neighbors safe. And we have an ability to do that by taking an individual action for a collective benefit. And I hope that all British Columbians will hear that message, take the steps to get themselves vaccinated. It's effective, it's safe, it's free, and it will protect you in the long term. Richard Zussman, Global News. For Dr. Henry and, and Premier Horgan, this is clearly putting additional pressure on those in restaurants. You know, they're not often asked unless they're serving alcohol to ask for ID. They will be required to do something new Will there be additional support given to those working in restaurants being asked to enforce this? And does that additional challenge, uh, is that one of the factors for why food courts, coffee shops, uh, fast food joints and cafeterias are now exempt uh, from the proof of vaccination? Well, I'll, I'll let Dr. Henry get to the end of that question, but I will say at the front end, 
that uh, the hospitality sector was enthusiastic about this because they want to make sure that they stay open, not just for the next month or two, but for the rest of their business. They want to be able to plan. Uh, when uh, we announced uh, we were reducing restrictions back in May, what I heard more than anything else is, finally, we can plan. We know with some certainty what the future holds. Well, here we are three months later and the future is still bright, but we have taken a, a side road or a tributary off in another direction. But the goal is the same, the objectives are the same, and those who want to work together to keep our industry open, uh, to keep uh, social engagements as vibrant as possible, are getting behind that. And, and uh, for those who uh, declare that government is imposing this, we're doing so after extraordinary consultation with industry. Now, it's uneven across the province, as is the immunization rate. And we want to speak to those, those communities who have got low immunization rates, that the best way forward for you and your families and your communities is to follow the lead of other parts of the province that have very high uh, immunization rates. So that's what we want to see come out of this. And, and I, I really do say to those who are, are frustrated, the evidence is in. It's abundantly clear that the safest and effective, most effective way for you to care for yourself and your family is to get vaccinated. Thanks. I couldn't say it better myself. I, I will say that um, when we looked at uh, the practicalities of how this would work and the riskiness of settings. There's a, uh, there's a fundamental difference between most restaurants and many of the restaurants, cafes, uh, especially the licensed ones, ones with table service, are the ones that were under our food and, and liquor serving orders uh, in the past. So they're the ones that have been most differentially affected by this. So there's a number of reasons why we focused on those settings. It protects the business, it protects the workers, and it makes sure that uh, uh, they have the resources in place and we're working with them to, to make sure those resources are there. So those are the same settings where, for example, you've been required to take down a person's name and contact information before they sit down. So it, it is going to be a, an added uh, stress, but it is, as, as uh, the Premier is saying, this is something that we've come up with together. So if you are concerned about it, if you're angry about it, do not take it out on that business. This is an order that they have to comply with and we're going to be supporting people to doing that in the most efficient way possible. And for the vast majority of us, that means um, getting our vaccine card and having it ready when we go to a restaurant. If you're somebody who chooses not to be immunized, then please support your local restaurants by doing takeout, by doing drive through. And yes, uh, we specifically um, did not uh, put in places where people don't have any control over where somebody's sitting down. They don't have people who are up there greeting people when they come in. So places like fast food restaurants, the risk is different as well. The vast majority of people are in and out, take it and go, and uh, the, the seating is, is more limited and more spread out. But that doesn't mean uh, we've given up all of the, the other things that are still in place. So there are still uh, CD safety plans that need to be in place in those settings as well, which mean people wear masks, which means uh, you keep your physical distance, you sit uh, at tables that are, are distanced from each other. So all of those things will still be in place. Richard, do you have a follow-up? What will the obligations be for people who hold events like weddings or other community gatherings where, you know, they rent a banquet hall or a community area? Are they responsible themselves as event organizers to download the app, to scan people's QR codes? And what sort of tools will there be around enforcement, specifically in those cases, but more broadly, uh, if people, uh, you know, aren't actually you know swiping the qr codes and aren't following uh, the province's protocols here yeah so uh, these organized events they have had restrictions on them as you know uh, various times over the last uh, 18 months and there are still capacity restrictions there's restrictions on things like dancing on people remaining seated uh, for these indoor events because we know that these types of events are ones where this virus can take hold and can spread rapidly. So this is something that we've been hearing that many people are embracing this because so many people are immunized and they know that having people there who are not immunized is not yet immunized is a risk for others 
And especially if we think about weddings, for example, where you have older people, where you have elders, where you have people who um, uh, uh, may not mount as strong an immune response. It's another layer of protection for you and your family. And yes, the onus will be on organizers uh, to ensure that people who attended uh, have the, the app and they can have it on a paper. You don't need necessarily to to download the app to swipe it, but you can, you will, there will be a requirement to check people's uh, vaccination status for those events. Um, and, you know, we are working out the practicalities with the different industries. For example, um, if you're somebody who goes to a gym regularly, um, you can, with permission, have that recorded so that you don't have to show your vaccine card every time you go to the gym for people who recognize uh, people who go regularly to venues and places like that. So all of that um, best practice will be working out with the different sectors over the next few weeks. Lisa Euston, News 1130. Hi there. Talking about enforcement, I, I'm wondering, um, you're saying for the next few weeks, so how soon or is the hammer going to come down on making sure that people are following this, that businesses are, that people are, and, you know, there's been this long list of businesses that are saying that they're never going to follow this. So how long is it going to be before that hammer really comes down? Well, we expect that as of the 13th, uh, that this uh, this will be in place, and yes, uh, we're you know we we've never uh, put the hammer down as you so eloquently put it. Uh, you know we will be working with businesses, we'll be working with people to support them. But yes, if people are making a disturbance, they there is provisions for this to be enforced. If businesses are are flaunting the, the rules and putting people at risk, then there's implications for that as well. Lisa, do you have a follow up? Just a quick one about the seven days for the two doses requiring seven days when we're generally told that it's 14 days after our second dose that we have immunity. So I'm wondering what, or protection, I'm wondering why the seven days difference for this Vax Pass. Yeah, so there's a, a couple of things about that. One is uh, we're not requiring the seven days or the 14 days after dose one. Um, so those are immunological functions. So it does take two to three weeks after your first dose before your immune system has built up both the, the antibody levels and started to build up your your cell-mediated immunity, those, those memory B cells and T cells that help protect you in the long term. And then with your second dose, it really is re-stimulating the same immune system so you get that immune protection much sooner and it is on average around seven days after dose two so we were initially thinking about that but practically speaking we're not going to exclude somebody who's had their second dose uh, it just it didn't make sense in a practical way for uh, what we're trying to accomplish with the VC vaccine card so there's not going to be a waiting period that's required you just need to be immunized that's the important thing Next question is from Justine Hunter, Globe and Mail. Hi, thank you. Um, I just want to be clear I, I make sure I've got this straight. Patrons of these listed businesses and activities will have to be vaccinated uh, according to the dates laid out today, but not the workers in these places. Am I correct? Well, this program does not apply to workers. Obviously, we think it's incredibly important, and I know we've been working with many businesses. Um, we've been doing immunization clinics in these high-risk businesses to make sure that the workers there are immunized. But that is an employer-employee relationship. So the vaccine card is about people who are participating, spectating, um, going to events and services. Justine, do you have a follow-up? I do, thank you. And um, I know the Canadian Constitutional Foundation has put the province on notice that they are prepared to launch a court challenge unless you make accommodations for individuals who cannot be vaccinated for medical or religious reasons. I'm wondering if you're open to reconsidering that particular policy? Yeah, so what we've been talking about, and I've talked with the uh, the, the Human Rights Commissioner on this, we've talked with uh, all of the people who are involved, it, you know, this is a temporary measure with high-risk settings. And so accommodation does not necessarily mean allowing people into these high-risk settings, and it's not, of course, practical for somebody who's uh, a server at a restaurant to be assessing whether somebody has a valid reason why they should be in or not. So yes, the accommodation is that you can participate in these events in other ways without being physically present 
um, if you're not yet immunized. So people can watch the, the game on TV. You can continue to doing the things that we've been doing over the last 18 months when things have been closed down by necessity. So that's support your local businesses by doing takeout. Support your local team by watching them uh, remotely. You know, having those participation, uh, participating in those events um, and those, uh, those activities remotely, watching movies at home rather than going to the cinema so that that business can continue to, to operate safely. Next question is from Cindy Harnett, Times Colonist. Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, in relation to um, vaccinations, is there any update that you could give us today on booster shots for seniors or the immune compromised and the vaccination for uh, vaccination order perhaps for other healthcare workers? Uh, yeah, all of those things are, are ones that we're uh, continuing to work on. I know that the National Advisory Committee on Immunization is uh, coming out this week and we have a, a meeting on Thursday around uh, specific immune compromising conditions and uh, what the recommendations are on that. So expect to hear something about that uh, by later this week, early next week. Uh, the information and the data around what's the optimal level for uh, seniors in long-term care, as you know, uh, We've been talking with Quebec, we've been looking at the data that we have here, and that is still under discussion. In the next couple of weeks, we will have more information uh, to share around um, uh, seniors and elders, particularly in long-term care in those settings. Um, and yes, we are continuing to work through uh, the issues as an employer uh, with the Health Employers Association of BC and the unions around uh, healthcare workers. But I think I've made it very clear that we do feel vaccination is an important part of being a healthcare worker in all parts of our healthcare system. And the details of that will be coming out soon as well. Follow up, Cindy. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Dr. Henry, you, you, you spoke about, you know, get angry at the virus, not at, at one another. And so then I thought, do you want to lend any messaging around um, people having to show proof of vaccination, um, something, uh, you know, to those uh, frontline workers, if you will, those people that will be asking for this vaccination, um, how we can possibly treat them and, and regard them. In, in many cases, they may be youth, you know, um, asking for this identification and, and uh, you know, it could be problematic for some. You know, I, I was talking to some friends of mine on the weekend who have uh, young children and the kids were really, really frustrated. This was last year and they were like, how come we can't do this and how come we can't have our friends? And, and she, uh, she, they were in the car and she stopped the car and said, okay, everybody, let's, let's get out and let's just show to the top of our lungs, I hate COVID. And I think we can all identify with that. This has been hard. And so let's all get out there and shout, I hate COVID. And then let's remember that it's uh, us together that are in this storm and that it is supporting each other that will get us through this storm. And yes, don't take it out on that business. Take it out on the virus. Take it out on, uh, uh, you know, but let's, uh, let's support our people who are, are working hard in the hospitality industry. Let's support people who are trying to keep their gyms open and keep going safely. Let's support our, our sports team so that we can get back to having those important things together. And uh, you know, this vaccine card is another one of those tools that helps us do that. And uh, I'm absolutely with you. We need to treat the people who are on the front lines, whether you're healthcare workers, whether you're working in restaurants, whether you're working in gyms, with respect and compassion and kindness. Maybe you want to say that. Too. Last question today is from Eva Eugen, CBC. Eva, are you there? I have one mute. Um, uh, I wanted you to touch on, um, if you could please walk us through how uh, an isolated senior who is not digitally literate and may not speak English as a first language, what is the most easily accessible way for them to get their vaccine card? And could we please get an answer in French as well? Well, I, uh, I'll take the opportunity as I'm standing here to answer a question that I uh, skipped over earlier on. I don't know if it was from uh, Richard Zuzman or, or Rob Shaw, but they asked about supports for business, and I, and I, I skirted past that. I want to just reinforce that, uh, again, from the beginning, 
We've been ensuring that we are focused on making sure workers are whole, businesses to the best of our ability have been remaining open, and where we've had circuit breakers and other orders that have prevented them from operating, that we've had programs in place, mostly grants, sometimes loans, sometimes deferred costs, to, to make sure they get through uh, COVID. We're not changing that now, and if there are additional costs or, or, or challenges with the vaccine card, we stand ready to assist both uh, frontline workers and businesses. And I'll also add to Dr. Henry's, uh, I'd like to yell, I hate COVID, and I'm very much going to do that tonight when I, I get home. But uh, I think that we need to keep in mind that everyone is frustrated. The people in the grocery stores, the people in our hospitals, uh, Dr. Henry, myself, Mr. Minister Dix, our families, our neighbors, our community, everyone is unhappy. Everyone would like to see the end of this. But where I've seen um, glimmers of hope uh, that keep me going every day is when I see how extraordinary people can be in times of crisis and challenge and how they work together. Uh, they don't think about uh, their neighbors, where they came from, what their jobs are, what their political affiliations are. They just want to support the people around them. And that is the power uh, that I've seen at play during the pandemic. People collaborating, coming together, recognizing that not everyone is suffering at the same rate. We talked about that. Uh, Melanie Mark, the Minister of Tourism, is always quick to say we're in the same storm, but we're not in the same canoe. And everyone's had different impacts. But we need to keep that in mind before we get angry and frustrated at the person in front of us. Because the person in front of us did not uh, put COVID-19 into our worlds. The person in front of us is grappling with the same challenges. Treat them with respect, treat them with kindness, and together we'll all get through this. And I'll ask Minister Dix to uh, answer the last question. Uh, I, I think um, what uh, uh, we can say is that if you have difficulty getting the BC vaccine card, there's a number of ways going about it. Obviously, asking a friend or a family member to assist you, whatever the issue is, because the issue is language to assist you. You can call a provincial vaccine line. 130 languages are served on that line, and that's a significant uh, service provided. There's information in multiple languages to assist people in using um, the downloading service as well, and you can visit one of our 64 service BC centers. So there's lots of opportunity, and I think that people have shown that through the pandemic. One of the really heartening things to, that we saw and we've seen in the last few months, there was a moment, for example, which where Richmond City Centre was behind other um, community health service areas in Metro Vancouver in terms of vaccination rates. It was in the high 50s. Richmond City Centre is now vaccinated at 90% because of a lot of the, these kinds of efforts reaching out in the community. My constituency, which is one of the most diverse, uh, has the largest number of people who speak English as a second language, is vac vaccinated at 94% today. So there are these opportunities if, if people if people are isolated, to get support from others and to reach out for support. In addition, we're going to be working with lots of service organizations and health authorities to reach out to people who have other challenges in terms of getting the vaccine card. There's lots of opportunities if you can't get your card, if, you can't, uh, if you're not able to download it, you can call us in multiple languages and get service. We have uh, lots of uh, available service online in different languages, and I encourage everyone to do that. And I think we've demonstrated in reaching out over the last number of months everywhere in BC that uh, the opportunity to get vaccinated and to get information about the value of vaccination and now to get the BC vaccine card will be available to everyone and the supports will be available in multiple languages. En français, je dirais que dans les langues de la province, il y en a, il y en a beaucoup, et dans 130 langues, on, on donne des services uh, au téléphone, et c'est sur notre uh, ligne téléphone 1-833-838-2322. On peut téléphoner et recevoir des services et des soutiens dans des, uh, des langues, plus que 200 langues, je, uh, je pense que c'est 130 langues. Aussi, on peut um, aller au centre de service uh, Colombie-Britannique, un peu partout dans la province, 64, pour uh, recevoir des services. Uh, et surtout, on peut demander à des amis et, et votre famille de vous aider uh, à, 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 à imprimer, imprimer votre carte de vaccin en Colombie-Britannique. Donc, il y a beaucoup d'opportunités dans plusieurs langues 
beaucoup d'opportunités, beaucoup de soutien aux gens pour recevoir leur carte de vaccination. Eva, do you have a follow-up? I do. Um, since not all restaurants or eating establishments are, are included in these requirements, how will customers know which businesses require vaccine cards? Will there be a sign outside to, um, to indicate that or some other way for customers um, to know what the requirements are to access those businesses? And can we also get an answer to this in French as well? Thank you. Uh, la, réponse, la réponse est oui. The response is yes. Thank you. Thank you.